my name is Victor Taylor. Uh, I'm a senior um, and I'm the head student manager for Davidson Men's Basketball. So do a variety of stuff, anything really you can think of from filling up water bottles to handing out towels and water bottles and Gatorades during games. Um, and we're helping coaches in the office, you know, with scouts, uh, doing film stuff, um, really anything you can think of. We do stuff on the road too. So I played basketball a little bit in high school, but um, I mostly played tennis. I was a competitive junior tennis player. Um, just kind of worked out. My dad actually played tennis here. Um, so I, I was more drawn to that from a, you know, from a family standpoint. Um, but I always loved basketball. I mean, I grew up watching Davidson basketball. Uh, I was at, you know, the 2008 Gonzaga game in Raleigh. Uh, I was at Davidson Duke games growing up. Like, it, it's always been uh, a part of my life, basketball and Davidson basketball specifically. So it's been awesome to, you know, become a part of Davidson basketball. I, you know, decided to come to Davidson in April of my senior year in high school, which was during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm sitting at home thinking about how I can be involved with athletics in college just because sports have always been such a big part of my life. Um, so I reached out to Coach Matt McKillop when he was an assistant here and said, hey, like, I want to be a student manager. Um, how can I make that happen with you all? Victor, for example, he, he's willing to say, hey, I think it would be really good if practice today, you, you, you kept in mind that guys are a little bummed about the loss or, hey, guys are feeling really good right now. I think today's a day where, where we can really go a little bit harder. And uh, when you have someone who you trust who's a part of the team in that way and you can rely on to do that, it, it helps everybody better. You know, part of it is that I've decided, you know, I want to be a college coach and this is, you know, the best way to advance my career path um, through that. But also it's just the group of guys that we have here like this. Like, I don't think I would come back if the players weren't such great people, the coaches weren't such great people and the managers that we you know, have weren't such great people. Like, it's a joy to come in here every single day. I walk in the lot, like I'm going to walk in the locker room after this and I'm going to see Mike Lockman or Hunter Adam and like, we're just going to, you know, talk shop like we're gonna hang out like it's it's like having like you know 25 of your closest friends when you walk in that locker room you're like these guys are awesome like why wouldn't I keep coming back and obviously like there are wins there are losses there are ups and downs in the season but just knowing that everybody's in it together makes it super easy to say like hey like this sucks right now but it's gonna get better like teams are like we're gonna win um these guys play hard like it's it's great it's it's a joy to work for them I mean, really, since, like you said, since I've been alive, like since I was born, I've always been uh, around Davidson basketball, kind of. Um, my dad was an assistant coach uh, from the 90s to 2008. Um, so when I was born in 2004, he was already into that process of being an assistant coach. So I was always uh, around the program for the first like four or five years before we moved. Um, and then just still follow the program, I would say, after we left and after we moved, but still always had my eye on Davidson, seeing different games and watching the score, whatever it was. And then when I decided to come back um, to actually go to school here, um, still followed the program. And, and that, that actually just happened for my dad to be hired just a few months after I had gotten accepted. So definitely a cool process, I would say. Like I had talked to a little bit, I talked to a few people on the staff um, about trying to be involved with the program, whether that be manager, walk on, whatever. Um, and that really was a, a good draw to me compared to other schools. So just to be able to have that balance of academics and athletics um, was definitely really appealing. It also helps that the campus is beautiful, great town around, um, and also a place that I was comfortable with, as we talked about before. But Saz kind of taught me his ways when I first came in, um, but really just like from our role not having more of an impact like on the court, but still trying to have like an impact on the game, whether that be like trying to help remind guys of certain things that you just talked about in the timeouts or just different like defenses that we talked about. Um, just trying to, and just trying to encourage guys too when things are maybe going wrong or even when things are going right too. Um, but yeah, just that, trying to have that impact on the court. Uh, it's cool seeing him and Matt Matheny interact because I wonder like, oh, is that what it was like with me and my father? Um, when I was a player, obviously, and I'm sure in some ways that when I was working for him um, as, as an assistant coach, 
you know, it's I've I've done a pretty decent job of thinking, not like thinking about it in that way. Um, I, I hope I treat Brock like everybody, um, and I hope I treat him like I treat you know Grant Huffman or Reed Bailey or um, Bobby Durkin or Angelo Brizzy. Um, but it, it when you know, and you could say Will Regal and Rusty Regal, um, say Connor Perky, some some guys who have they've had Davidson in their blood, and uh, it's no surprise when they walk in the gym. They want nothing other than to do what is asked, to, to do the best job of what is asked of them and to help our program in any way they can. I mean, Davidson basketball is just a family, I would say. Um, like when I was first four years of my life, like I remember like there were different times where play, players babysat me. I've been taught stories and like, I've seen pictures from people coming to birthday parties over at our house for me or for my family. So definitely even then and coming back now, Davidson basketball is just a family, I would say. Um, very tight-knit connection, regardless of what year players play. Like they're always here to support you and really just help you in anything, whether that be your job um, or just getting through, helping with, like with your experience at Davidson. So yeah, a family would probably be the main one. Now off to our next adventure. I'm Justin King. I am the athletic trainer for the men's basketball team here at Davidson College. My role changes as the season changes, as what the guys require changes. So off season, um, it's a lot of prep work. It's a lot of laying a foundation. And I work with coach Brian Seitz, who's amazing at what he does um, in the weight room. And so what I try to do is I try to do those things that maybe we can't focus all of our attention on um, in the weight room. So for example, working on balance, mobility and stability, we'll go out to Lake Campus here at Davidson and we will practice our balance and our stability um, on paddle boards and we'll do paddle board balance training. I'll have the guys do different mobility yoga poses and then sometimes we'll even do like 360 jumps. And so those things help create a foundation for some of their physiological requirements that they're going to need in season. So as we move closer to in season, um, we'll take some of those same components and maybe shrink them down because our time and space becomes more limited. So for example, on a game day, um, four hours before the game is our pregame meal, 15 minutes before that, every single game day since I've been here for the past six seasons, we do a mobility session. So we'll go through all of these different poses that um, you know, one, it's a way to prep their body for the game. Another thing that it does is that it's a screen. So that if a guy goes through one of these movements, and he says, oh, Justin, this kind of this kind of bothered me, this movement, then we still have four hours to make any type of corrections or treatments that he might need in order to make sure that he's ready for the game. This season, um, we partnered with Connexon to start using um, GPS tracking devices for our players. So in the off season, we were able to track them in all their movements, we were able to track their speed, their distance that they covered, the intensity at which they played. And then as we progressed to end season, um, we were able to see kind of, again, what are those demands are gonna be on our, on our guys? Uh, how hard do they run? Are, is our preparation and practice reflecting the demands that the game has from a movement standpoint, from an exertion standpoint. And so, yeah, so we have these clips that clip on during practice. It's kind of like a little old fashioned beeper clip that maybe people that aren't on the basketball team would remember. Um, but they gave us a bunch of patches um, to put on the game uniforms. And I took about, I took all of our game pair, all of our pairs of game shorts home. And my wife was kind enough to spend two or three hours sewing each of those patches onto the game shorts. So when you see the guys kind of flip their waistbands over and you see a little blue X on the on their waistband, um, that's my wife, Wendy King. She, she sewed all those on there with, with the help of my mom. So they both work together. Um, so that was pretty cool. But the GPS trackers have been awesome for us and it's helped us not only see what the guys are doing in the game, but as we look at each practice, we know that how we can progressively um, overload those 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 exertions so that a practice in um, July is going to look a little bit different than a practice in August which looks a little bit different than a practice that we, we will have this week um, because we want to make sure that the guys not only 
are prepared for what they're gonna feel in the game, but we're also not overloading them so they have enough energy. So it's a really fine balancing act that we're still still learning, um, but we're, we're really grateful that we have these things to, to kind of help us improve. Um, there are days where I think he's the most important member of this program. Uh, he, he has to have this incredible balance between um, working with the coaching staff and then working with the players and helping us all work together, which you know sounds simple, but um, but we're in more in the thick of the season. You need, you need everybody um, working together in a way that's that's at the highest of levels. And uh, I think the obvious thing is Justin does an incredible job helping our players stay healthy, and when they need to be even greater even gets back to greater health he, he does it as well as anybody in this country um, but the time that he invests outside of the normal work hours um, he'll get a call about somebody being sick and he'll be the first one to run to the store make sure they have Gatorades or medicine um, the uh, after hours drives he's got to take to urgent care or the emergency room or to help a player get to and from a surgery or to a rehab session uh, th those things don't go unnoticed and those aren't on anybody's schedule they pop up and Justin has to be ready to willing and willing to sacrifice that time with his friends and his family to, to do what's best for our team I have a ton of respect for our athletes our players and the work that they put in every single day I think unless you see it it's hard to comprehend how much they actually do so like you said last night we got in at 11 30 and one of the guys came up to me and said hey Justin my back is really sore I know it's I know it's 11.45 now, almost midnight. Do you mind helping me work this out? And I was more than happy to help him feel better. And he sent me a text at about 12.30. He said, oh my gosh, thank you for doing that. My back feels so much better. Um, and then I saw him this morning at 9 a.m. Um, after working on him last night. And, and for me, I, I look at that as like a privilege. Not a lot of medical professionals get to be with an athlete or a patient every single step of the way from the moment they do their activity to the moment they get injured to the moment that you're able to help get them back and I get to be there through all that whole process and I it's it's a great blessing it's a great privilege to be able to work with these caliber of athletes and seeing them work so hard makes me want to help them I want to help them as much as I can and our coaching staff is amazing it there is the best coaching staff I've ever worked with and so anything I can do to help them do their job better, I want to I do the best I can. We, we have a team of fighters, and you don't fight unless you have character. You don't fight unless you have energy. And so much of that, that energy comes from everybody on this team. And I think, I think our guys play for each other. And that's why we keep getting better, and that's why we're in every fight. Um, and I think uh, when you can rely on guys like Chris, you can rely on guys like Marco Katzak, you can rely on guys like Brock, in addition to the managers that we spoke about, bringing energy regardless of the circumstances, it makes everybody better. We have been so close on so many different occasions and um, we have tried our best to help our players understand that. And uh, it, you think win and loss more than anything, but you, you don't look at the numbers and how they get better and our defense numbers improve and our offensive numbers over the last eight games have improved, which took a little bit of adjusting once we lost David Scoban. Um, but nobody wants to see those numbers, how, how close we are to having a drastically different win, win and loss record. But ultimately, the goal is to get better and be our best in March, and that's still the mission we're on and we're still doing it.